Earth has seen a lot of odd habitats in its day, and the late Carboniferous definitely falls into that category. This was a time that would be quite foreign to any potential time traveler, as it was home to bizarre looking trees and giant insects that would give anyone the heebie-jeebies. The late Carboniferous, also referred to as the Pennsylvanian, was a subsystem of the Carboniferous period and spanned from roughly 323.2 million years ago to 298.9 million years ago. At this point in time, the mega continents of Gondwana and Pangaea made up the vast majority of land, while the ancient Paleotethys Sea and the Panthalassic Superocean surrounded the lands. And zooming in, things got weirder. The atmosphere during these times was much richer in oxygen, possibly 35% more than today's level. This excess of oxygen made air more breathable to life that had inefficient respiratory systems. This helped many walks of life, but perhaps the best example are the insects of the late Carboniferous, as paleontologists believe the oxygen-rich environment allowed them to breathe more efficiently, resulting in bugs growing to untold proportions. One of the most iconic insects of those times were the giant predatory griffinflies, known as Meganeura, which are related to modern-day dragonflies. This genus dominated the sky and could have a wingspan of up to 2 feet or 0.6 meters. They appeared to have preferred more open areas of the swamps that dominated the earth and had spines on their legs that would keep any unfortunate prey from escaping, usually other insects. The Meganeur were joined by other large insects in the sky, such as the Mesotyrus, an incredibly large insect belonging to the Paleodictyoptera, an order of now extinct insects characterized by a beak-like mouth, theorized to have been used to pierce plant tissue. The Mesotyrus was one of the larger members of this order, possessing an impressive wingspan of 22 inches or 56 centimeters. Large insects really dominated the skies and swamps, especially ones like Meganeura, who had very little predators to worry about. But there were few below that large flying insects had to watch out for, such as the Proterogerinus. This was an early tetrapod amphibian that grew between 1.3 and 2.5 meters, or 4 to 8 feet in length. It also possessed an elongated jaw and could thrive both on land and in swampy waters, indicated by their strong limbs for land and powerful long tail that would have provided excellent locomotion in water. And so far, it's the only known predator of Meganeura, a demonstration of their strength. These would have been a common sight in the late Carboniferous, along with some creepy crawlies, and one that really knew how to deliver a shiver was the infamous Arthropleura, an extinct millipede arthropod of nightmarish proportions. This was an absolute giant, being the largest known land invertebrate of all time, with the biggest being capable of reaching 8 feet and 8 inches in length, or 2.63 meters. Additionally, the largest are thought of possibly reaching a maximum of 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. Fortunately for others, it appears that their diets consisted of mostly plants, making them some of the earliest known herbivores. The fauna were not the only ones to thrive during these times, as this was also a good time to be a part of the flora. During the late Carboniferous period, much of the Earth, especially around the equator, was very warm and humid, giving birth to vast, thick prehistoric swamps, known as coal forests or swamps, as they would end up becoming a large source of present-day coal. These dwarfed any swampy habitat known today, and were one of the most dominant biomes of the time. They seemed to specifically thrive in areas that were flat and low-lying, with rivers flowing through from higher, drier land. These wet, lush lands provided plant life with nutrient-rich soil, which they made the most of. As a result, the coal swamps of the Carboniferous had some of the highest flora diversity and richness. Many of these trees were not like the ones of today, and some were quite out of this world, quote-unquote. Numerous types of plant called the cold swamps home, but there are four genuses that made up the majority of the flora, one of them being the Sigillaria. This was an extinct genus of lycopod that preferred the intermediate areas between the levee and swamp habitats. These were large tree-like plants that were spore-bearing and could reach 30 meters in height or 100 feet and could be either a single trunk or a forked one, producing quite an odd appearance. They are believed to have had quick life cycles and bore long grass-like leaves. Additionally, it's theorized that they died after reproduction. However, no evidence of this has been found yet. Lepidodendron was another vastly common type of flora in these coal forests. These also belong to the same clad as Sigillaria, the lycophytes. And like the Sigillaria, these plants were spore-bearing and had fast life cycles, with many estimating a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. 
It was comparable to modern day trees in size, as it could reach 50 meters in height or roughly 160 feet and the trunks were often over 1 meter, or 3.3 feet in diameter. Juveniles produce a unique visual due to their unbranched trunk with leaves, and once matured, their looks changed to a nature that have led to them being referred to as giant club mosses. Another resident flora of the coal forest was the calamites, which were extremely successful and vast. These were tree-like horsetails that were closely related to modern-day horsetails. They bore a trunk that resembled a bamboo shoot and had its branches arranged in whorls. They were medium sized and could grow anywhere between 30 and 50 meters, or 100 to 160 feet. Calamites were an extremely common sight during the late Carboniferous, and are also one of the most iconic plants of those times. They were additionally rich in diversity, as thus far, 13 species of calamites have been identified. The last of the great four was the Tyridosperms. This was actually a group of plants, not just one genus, that were seed-bearing and were some of the earliest to do so. Furthermore, they heavily resemble modern-day ferns, but unlike modern ferns, these plants reproduce solely through seeds, leading to the fitting nickname seed ferns. These plants were extremely prevalent in the coal swamps, so much so that during the 19th century, the Carboniferous was referred to as the Age of Ferns, despite the inaccuracy as it should have been called the Age of Pteridosperms, a change which occurred in the 20th century. The coal swamps of the late Carboniferous were the dominant force for millions of years, until an event known as the Carboniferous Rainforest Collapse, a time in which it's believed that the cooling of the earth led to the swamps becoming cut up in isolated islands, where many would eventually wither and disappear along with its inhabitants. This being said, swamps located in what is now China were not impacted by this event and were able to survive into the Permian.